This is the super sweet 100 cherry tomato plant. And I put this in the barrel here with the cage around it. And it's wonderful. I mean, as you can see, it has beautiful clusters of tomatoes here. And so in fact, I think I'll just pick one or two to go with our cucumbers and our salad later. It wants to go up, it's taller than I am. And behind me is the German tomato plant, big yellow German tomato plant. And so that'll be coming along as well. And these are right by the house and there's a lot of sun here now. And look, yeah, look at this. It's doing wonderfully right now. It has flowers, it's kind of bush. I'm really happy with the way these plants are doing in their containers. And what's convenient, of course, is there's a hose nearby so I can water them easily. Now, if you think of this as a science experiment, yes, we've randomized the tomato plants to five different areas, really. So there's right by the house and we'll be going down to the patio garden and the big garden. And in the greenhouse, there are three tomato plants that are doing really well. As far as plants go, they don't have a lot of flowers or anything yet. But over here, we have this nice little piece of land. And I don't think there's any tomatoes ripe yet, but I wanted to show it to you. It's what I do with the, um, at the very end, when I've sort of planted all the tomato plants I wanted in the containers in the garden, I usually have some extras. I did give some away to friends. And then I put six of them out here. And so if you were visiting the garden before, you might have seen me plant some of these. I planted them sideways in the trench. So I'm going to walk around this nice big pile of mulchy stuff I got here. And um, wow. So these plants, you, you know, they're out here. They're far away from the house. I can't, I can water them with the hose, but I bring, I've been bringing out, you know, nice watering cans full of water and I've been feeding them and they're doing well. And so I'm, oh, there's tomatoes for sure. And I plant, these plants were started a little later than some of the other plants, but yeah, they're, they're uh, covered up to keep the deer from chewing on them. And what'll happen is they'll, they'll get chewed on anyway. Um, but uh, tomatoes will grow and ripen inside just like they are. These are beautiful. These are beautiful. They look like baby beef steaks. So that's the extra garden where the extra plants are. Tomato, I think we're picking this morning. And you know, I have many varieties because that's kind of the fun thing I like to do. So I have down in the big garden, a variety of organic beefsteak. I have um, Cherokee purple and this mortgage lifter, which is of course a fun plant because it's got a story behind it. And look at the garden, it's really starting to explode with growth. The zinnias, the giant zinnias, coming along. This is our organic beef steak getting beautiful. And over there, the Cherokee purple. The myth of the vine ripened tomato is just that. It's really kind of a myth. Once they start to turn, you can take them off. And in fact, too hot over 90 degrees, they're not going to get ripe because it's too hot for the lycopene. So it's better actually at that point, if you pick them, bring them in the house and keep them, you know, warm, but not hot like it is out outside sometimes. So look at this. This is a nice little raised bed over here, but I did this year. And it's nice the way this one has a very sort of compact, but bushy and look at it. It has a dozen tomatoes on it in beautiful clusters. There's a whole nice cluster all down here. So pretty. And here we go. Mortgage lifter, not big but full of taste and so delicious, yes. So I'm excited. Our tomato joining here, our beautiful cucumbers. And look at that in the sun, isn't that pretty? We love the colors of summer. There's the colors of summer, there's the smells, the taste, the feel. And they also just smell really good. Thinking about doing, you know, put, people put these in um, potpourri. Now just really quickly, I wanna show you how well are the sweet potatoes doing? They like it hot, so. Good for them. This is the Nancy Hall variety. And this is a Korean variety. I planted two different kinds, both heirlooms. We're back here with the cucumbers, which got more cucumbers coming. There's a cucumber in here that's coming along. I got my eye on it here. They kind of hide. So I am excited about the cucumbers. 
the tomatoes, the onions are doing well. We won't visit the greenhouse today, but let me just say, there's three tomato plants in there that I'm going to be training up, and we'll visit them next time. They're going to be interesting to see. They're um, so viney that I'm going to need to come up with some elaborate system to keep them growing in the greenhouse and uh, have room to spread out. Three plants. It sure is fun growing tomatoes. This is the patio garden. You still take a look. Look at these big boys. Whew. Wow. I'm just waiting for them to get a little more color and then I'm going to bring them in. And in fact, what I also am going to do is um, bring this back and make a better job of connecting it and letting it come up the ladder. There's a number of little cherry tomato plants in here. Oh, there's actually a lot of little cherry tomatoes in here. And this is the Matt's Wild Cherry, and it does, it produces the clusters. And they're pretty tiny and delicate, so what I do actually is I cut off the whole cluster. Because if you try to pick them off one at a time, a lot of times they get uh, cracked and then, you know, some are for the birds. But yeah, beautiful little clusters. And this is the black cherry tomato plant. You can tell, look at these big clusters. I might even take this one in. Now this one I can easily pull off. It's the black cherry. Look at the difference in size. And then of course the beefsteak is super large compared to this. Those are Yukon Gold Organic Potatoes in these grow bags that Sue gave me. And they're doing um, amazingly well. And we have our cucumbers and we have a tomato and we actually might have another tomato or two and I'll be picking as the summer goes on. I'm very excited. So thanks for coming to visit Jane's Garden World. We'll see you again soon. Oh, and parsley. I can never have enough of that really. It's good dried in the winter, works great in a lot of recipes. And then of course in the summer, fresh parsley, chop it up, add it to anything, soup, salad, omelet. Same thing with the basil, you know, you could just do anything, add it to a stir fry. Marinade, gotta go. Thanks again for coming to visit Jane's Garden World.